Good morning. You listen to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Ruth Simon McRae, who's a textile designer. Ruth, how you doing? I'm doing great, Kim. How are you? I'm well. It's good to be with you. We're going to talk about the AIA convention that was held in your backyard outside of Atlanta this past mm-hmm. weekend. Uh, before we get there, though, a little bit on your background. You're a graduate of Georgia Tech, and you're also a columnist for Floor Focus, and you've been in the textile design business for most of your career. And what that means to the floor covering business is you've been designing carpets for a long time, right? That is correct. And you've got a great eye for color and tactile variation. So you've been very successful in the business, haven't you? I haven't. Thank you so much. All right. So you went to the AIA convention, stands for the American Institute of Architecture. They meet every year. This year it was held in Atlanta, so it was close by. This is not only a bunch of seminars, but it's also a product exposition, right? That's correct. And Uh, it's a business meeting for them. So it's their annual gathering. If you don't mind, a couple of highlights, because you don't go every year, so there's probably some things that took you by surprise. Well, the first reason I was going was to hear some of the seminars and workshops, and there was a huge range of topics. And I was going to be inspired, and and I certainly was, by some of the specific architects who spoke, particularly the rural studios and um, some really innovative architects, smaller architects. Their creative process is very very similar to our creative process, Mm -hmm. and so it was inspiring. All right. So, and that's really where you thought you'd you'd get the benefit is in the inspiration side, because most people know that architecture is about mostly the structure, and your focus for many years has been interior design, and while there's a lot of overlap, the focus for this meeting was on the structure itself, right? Well, that's true, but it's really, almost like any business, it's all about the customer. It's all about the person who's in the space, and the people who are using the space, and architects are very careful to do charrettes with the users and to really think about the function, you know, as well as the fact that it's a shell. So that's not any different from our process yeah. on the interior. And so at the expo, when you started looking around, I mean, you and I have been to many shows together. You didn't find a lot of the traditional type exhibitors that we see at Green Build or at Neocon. I mean, I think Shaw and Mohawk were there, but they were in small spaces, right? That's correct. No, it's very interesting. First of all, it was an enormous expo. I mean, it took me two days to walk it, and I walked fast. Mm -hmm. There were 42 aisles. Each one was in, you know, there were sections. For example, there was a section on cladding, as in building cladding, and there were so many different kinds of materials. I think that one theme of the materials was, you know, innovation in materials and also innovation in sustainable materials. Mm-hmm. Even concrete cladding had fiber in it, which was pretty interesting. The flooring that was at the show was primarily flooring that was attached to buildings. So it would be um, like stone hard poured flooring, terrazzo type flooring. I did notice that the flooring, the things that were new were lighter colors with brighter chips. One little stylistic note. There, there was also a lot of digital aspect related, you know, technology booths. So there was, you know, the master spec booth, and there was a lot of stuff on BIM. I mean, that's what interests the architect. Mm-hmm. Now, I noticed a couple of things. One, one in particular that I guess was, I don't know if it was worthwhile, but it certainly brings an audience, and that is Bill Clinton was a speaker at this, right? He was, and there was an enormous population of people. I think they said seven or 9,000 people heard him. But it was interesting because that was also part of a business meeting, so there were a number of very good speakers on top of him, including Moshe Safdie and, you know, other architects who were receiving awards and who were highlighted. Okay. So he was just the last speaker. He was. Okay. And, you know, in the news lately has been, you know, the fee that he normally gets to speak. So I don't know if he cut the AI a break, but that could be a very strong investment. So I guess that's why people have him come talk is because he brings a crowd. I think the people who are at the AIA would have been there anyway. There's a lot of reasons to go to that convention, but it was also a population that's interested in what he has to say about the Clinton Global Initiative, and architecture is very much a part. He has many architecture partners in the different things that they're doing. It's a, it's a natural fit. Okay. Another another thing I see just in the menu of, of things, they were, they were going to explain how they built the 9-11 Museum. Did you happen to sit in on that? No, unfortunately, I missed that. Mm-hmm. 
I had to be really selective about the lectures I took, and for everything I went to, I missed something. Yeah. Now, you, you told me there was uh, roughly 19,000 architects at this event, right? Well, there are 19,000 visitors, and it seems like they were almost all architects, you know, looking at the badges, and even only a handful of journalists. Yeah. So it's an important professional thing that happens for them every year, mm-hmm. and we were just lucky to have it in our backyard. All right, so I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm just curious. You you went there looking for inspiration. Uh, what did you come back with? I came back with more ideas for my work. You did? Okay, the, good. Uh, particularly that one lecture I told you about, the getting ideas for form from nature and being really creative with, you know, bending and shaping different kinds of materials. You know, that excites me. So some of that creative, out-of-the-box thinking. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, and it, it's it's interesting to see the different materials, even if they're not in the interiors part of the industry. It still adds more background to what you know. Yeah, and you mentioned this whole focus on digital. I mean, I guess that's a trend that's driving almost every business, right? Well, it is, but it's really interesting for the architect. I mean, I remember many, many years ago writing product into an AI spec before this was all. Uh, digital, Mm -hmm. um, and trying to rewrite a spec so that certain types of products were in it. And now the architect not only can select products to put into the master spec, and they get pulled in automatically, but then the document gets rewritten at every phase to accommodate those products that are being considered. Mm -hmm. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, you know, a lot of creative people say they love to start with pen and ink first, and then they go to a more computerized process later. Do you think that's changing? People would say, you know, common Mm -hmm. thought would be that it's different for younger people. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody creative who doesn't start with a pencil. You have to fool around. Yeah. And and it's an iterative process. And if you go too quickly to the computer, it looks good too fast. Looks like it's finished before you've really been through the process of noodling it out. The architects that you look at, they start with sketch- they start sketching first. Yeah. All right. Well, I know you and I are going to be together in less than a month at Neocon. Right. Look forward to that. Yeah, me too. It's a different kind of show. You're more in our uh, wheelhouse. Exactly. And so I look forward to seeing all the product. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you then. Thanks for the report on the AIA Expo in Atlanta. Again, been talking to Ruth Simon McRae, a textile designer, and you've been listening to Kempar and Fordelli.net.